The Toys Night Before Christmas Illustrated by Susanna Ronchi A Toy Box Tale for the Holidays It was the night before Christmas. Everyone was fast asleep when the lid of the jack-in-the-box in the corner of Rosie's room popped open and the jack inside climbed out. Then the big teddy bear who slept on Rosie's pillow slipped down from the bed and the little clock work mouse who lived on the shelf began to buzz softly. One by one all of the other toys woke up and tiptoed downstairs. Soon all the toys had gathered in the living room. It's not fair, said Jack. Santa brings everyone Christmas presents except us. That's because we're toys, explained Teddy. We don't need presents. And no matter how hard Jack tried to persuade them, all of the other toys agreed. But Jack had a special plan. After the other toys had gone back to bed, Jack found some material. He made himself a red and white Santa costume and a little sack to go with it. Then he found a present for each of the toys. A bit of cheese for the clockwork mouse, a timble for the big doll, and a carrot for Bunny. He popped them all into the sack and set off outside. It was a very snowy night, but Jack was determined to do everything the real Santa would do. And what he needed for that was a sleigh. Why don't you just use Rosie's sled, suggested Jolly Snowman. That would be perfect. So that's what Jack did, although it took him a little while to pull it free from the snow, for its runners were frozen fast. Now I need some reindeer, said Jack. And he was just wondering where to find some when a little bird flew down and chirped. I'll be Dasher, and I'll be Dancer, said another. And we'll be Donner and Blitzen, cried two others. Soon there were lots of birds eagerly fluttering round Jack's little sled. The birds fastened some beads to the sled and, with a flutter of thin wings, they pulled it into the air. As they got higher and higher, Jack started to wonder if it was such a good idea after all. I wonder if it, this is how the real Santa feels, he thought as he looked down and wished he hadn't. The ground did seem very far away. At last, Jack landed on the roof and began climbing down the chimney. It wasn't difficult to begin with, but it got narrower the farther down he went. He started to wonder how Santa, who was so big and round, ever managed to get to the bottom. And then he got to a point where he just couldn't get any further down. No matter how he wiggled or jiggled, he was lodged firmly in the narrow little chimney. He was stuck. But just when Jack was 
was sure he would never ever get out of the chimney again, he heard a loud ho 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 and was something like a magic sprinkling dust appeared all around him. In a jiffy he came unstuck and found himself falling very, very quickly indeed towards the bottom of the chimney. The real Santa had set him free. Upstairs the other toys were very surprised to hear a crash and a bang coming from the living room and they all ran downstairs to see what the matter was. There they saw Jack sitting in the fireplace, looking very berangled indeed, and coming down after him was a pair of legs that could only belong to the real Santa. What a magical Christmas Eve that was for the toys, for Santa let them help him unpack his presents. He put out Jack's little presents too, but he made sure that this year each of the toys had their very own present, especially from Santa. And do you know, just as she was walking, waking up, Rosie was sure was really sure that she heard a shrill whistle and a deep, merry, joyful voice ho 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 went far, far away and calling Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. The end.